There is no mystery as to why I have wanted to be a firefighter for as long as I can remember. My father was a fireman. When I was little, I had all the toys related to fire. In addition to the usual fire trucks, ambulances, and ladder trucks, I had a burning village with burning cellophane on the windows. Over the years, I have probably saved 100,000 people, mostly women and girls. I didn't want any other toys for Christmas or birthdays. The only exception was stuffed animals. I had seven Dalmatians of different sizes. I have a whole collection of firefighting gear in my closet from size three and up. My name is Butch Davis. I didn't take on the last name Butch until it was passed on to me when my father died. I was 12 then. He ran into a burning factory where dozens of people were trapped. After rescuing more than 10 workers, the ceiling collapsed on him and three others. We were told that the end was quick and he did not suffer much. I hope that was the case. One of the local fire stations is named in his honor. Losing my father left me with a variety of painful emotions. But one thing surprised me the most. Anger. I was angry at fire. I felt like the fire was deliberately challenging me to do something to take my father. I had nightmares about a flaming figure laughing at me while I sprayed it with a huge fire hose. My spraying has always been ineffective. Each time I woke up with the firm intention of taking revenge, I spent all of high school preparing for my future calling by studying science, staying in shape, and spending time in the fire department. My mother begged me to develop other interests, including girls. I gave up and dated a few girls. Nothing serious happened until I met Jennifer. We found a common language from the very beginning, attractive, caring, and she loved me. She seemed to like my single-minded desire to serve the community and, of course, later took advantage of my toned body. After spending most of the last two years in school together, we decided to get married. She got a job as an accountant after doing well in an accounting course in high school. I applied to be a firefighter. We had a garage apartment in my mother's house. I was accepted into the fire service and began training almost immediately. Jennifer was proud to see me in my first real firefighter costume. At first, when I started working regular shifts, Jennifer didn't complain. Going into our marriage, she knew that I would work strange shifts. We enjoyed each other no matter what time of day my schedule allowed me to be home. In a few years, with normal salary increases and promotions, we could afford to move into a small starter home. More importantly, Jennifer stopped taking the pills. Ten months later, we were blessed with the most beautiful baby girl in the world. We named her Virginia Louise, after her two grandmothers. Now, there were two loves in my life. Jennifer's views on our marriage began to change after the birth of our child. First, although she had a normal pregnancy, Jennifer said she didn't want to go through that again. She pressured me to have a vasectomy because taking the pill was making it difficult for her to maintain her ideal weight and condoms were reducing her pleasure. We could always adopt a child if we wanted more children. My interactions with Jennifer became more valuable to her because of the amount of time she had to spend with our young daughter. She needed my help with the baby, but she also didn't want to waste time with me. I also began to hear more and more that she was worried that I might get hurt or killed on the job, leaving her alone to care for Virginia. I brushed off her concerns. For as long as she knew me, she knew I was going to be a firefighter she had to adjust. My disrespect for her concerns was a big mistake on my part. A couple of years later, I went to cross-train as an emergency physician. For two weeks, I regularly spent evenings at home. Jennifer was delighted. I got to play every night with Virginia, and I got to play later every night with Jennifer. Jennifer often and emphatically said that this is how it should be. She and I regretted it when I returned to my normal schedule. It didn't seem to matter much to Jennifer that my being in the ambulance as a paramedic meant I would be less likely to be in danger. She said all first responders were at risk. When Virginia was old enough to go to school, Jennifer returned to work. She found out that she has a new boss who recently moved here. Jennifer said she seemed like a very nice man who was raising a girl. Virginia's age after losing his wife in a car accident. His move here was partly motivated by a desire to get away from a city that held too many memories of his wife. Jennifer said he often had a sad expression on his face. She expressed regret about his situation. 
I didn't see the red flag. As time went by, I continued to be absorbed in my work and spend as much free time as possible with Virginia. I didn't notice that during this time my time and expressions of affection for Jennifer had diminished. I agreed based on the assumption that we were a typical family and would always be that way. This was my feeling until I received the divorce papers. After I was treated at the firehouse, I took a sick day and went home to talk to Jennifer. She finished packing her things. I couldn't find the words. And she had a lot of words. You're probably shocked because you had no idea about our marriage for many years. My concerns for your safety and the fact that you willingly sacrificed your time with me simply meant nothing to you. And don't you dare say, I didn't see that coming. This was done for you to see. You just chose not to see. That's the problem. When Art became my boss, we became close. He suffered from the loss of his wife. I suffered from the loss of time spent with my husband. We both had daughters the same age that we raised mostly ourselves. They go to the same school and attend after-school clubs. Initially, we talked mainly about them. I lamented how little time you had for our daughter and even less for me. And don't you dare equate the time you played with her at night to what I had to do with her the rest of the time. Art and I were talking to each other. Remember when you and I did this? Art and I consoled each other. We cried together. We hugged each other sympathetically. In the end, we fell in love with each other. Honestly, I was ready to take our love to the physical level much earlier than he was. He continued to say that he hated being the reason for a marriage to end. I finally convinced him that I was going to divorce you whether we had sex or not. He gave in, and we were intimate for a couple of months. It all comes down to this. He is the one I want now. I'm sorry I did this to you, mostly because of Virginia. I know you love her and she loves you. I will provide you with virtually unlimited access to it, regardless of the court's decision. The settlement I proposed in the petition is fair. You get the house. I keep my car. You pay child support. I get no child support. And we split the assets 50-50. Virginia and I are moving in with Art and his daughter, Chloe. The address is listed on the divorce petition. No matter what you think, Art is a good person. She and Virginia get along well. Virginia and his daughter are already acting like sisters. Although he was hesitant to support my divorce, he is glad that everything is finally out in the open. He hopes that you and him can be polite to each other. There is a high probability of this. I was hoping you would react better, but I think... Emotions are too strong right now. Once you put some time into it, I think you'll realize that in the long run, it's better for all of us, including Virginia. And how exactly would this be best for her? She will still have you as her father, and she will have a father figure who is actually present for important events in her life. Damn it, Butch. She deserves more than you can give her. Can't you see it? I think no. Let me know when you want to see Virginia. She's already aware of what we're doing. Please understand the stress she is under and try not to make things worse. Jennifer headed towards the door. Are you pulling a divorce petition out of your ass and telling me not to stress her out? Of all. Goodbye, Butch. Jennifer left. I called a divorce lawyer and asked how I could burn this bitch. I was told that what she was offering was probably the best I could hope for. I could pay him to delay the divorce, but the final terms would hardly be any better. Only the wallets of the two lawyers will benefit. I signed the damn papers. Our marriage ended with a whimper, not a bang. I developed a relationship with Bourbon until my boss told me it was either the booze or my job, not both. I quit drinking. What I haven't given up is causing pain or plotting revenge. I simply could not think of any way to take revenge without directly or indirectly hurting my daughter. Virginia, however, caused me more and more pain every time I saw her. She was reluctant to go anywhere with me unless her new sister, Chloe, could go too. When I heard her call Art Dad, it broke my heart into pieces that weren't already shattered. The first time she canceled a date with me because of an important family event, she did it for me. I couldn't bring myself to schedule another visit. Jennifer had several suitable words for me to abandon my child. I had some choice words for Jennifer and the asshole ruining my life. I tried to concentrate on my work, the job for which I was born, the job I've always dreamed of, the job that cost me my family. In fact, 
I can't blame the work as much as I blame the fact that I let it consume me. I readily admit my guilt in this. As dedicated as I am to my duty, to be honest, most of my work was boring. I usually drove the ambulance. They made me work as a firefighter a few times. But 90% of the time, I was an EMT. Most of our ambulance visits were for either dead or dying people. There were too many runs only because the person was so large or physically disabled that he had no other means of medical transportation. Sometimes we had to perform artificial respiration on a person who would have died sooner without us. They usually died within the next few days. Then there were dehydrated people who were injected with saline. We were rarely called to fires, and even more rarely were we treating people for scrapes, cuts, or smoke inhalation. Like I said, boring, that is, until... The alarm rang and I ran to the ambulance. When I got on the road, I found out the address of Virginia's after-school club. Shit. My daughter would have been there at that time. I put the pedal to the floor. I rammed a couple of cars that just had to try to get through the intersection before the ambulance arrived. Sue me, idiots. I made my way through the traffic and rode the last turn on two wheels. The sight I saw shocked me to the core. Flames were shooting out of several windows of the circle building. I parked the ambulance and ran up to a group of children and a teacher I knew. Where is Virginia? She and several other people are still inside. Please help them. She didn't even have time to finish her sentence before I was already on the move. I ran through the open door, unsure of what I would encounter. Flames burst around the doorframe and burned me. I'm not sure how I broke down the classroom door, but I did. The teacher was lying on the floor. I told her to let the kids crawl out the door. She and the children headed toward the exit when I heard, Dad! Dad! Help me! It was Virginia. A bookshelf fell on her. I picked it up as if it were made of paper. He grabbed his daughter and dragged her outside. I grabbed her under my arm and ran on my knees to the door, trying not to inhale the smoke. When we got to the front door, the teacher and other children were still there. The flames around the door prevented them from leaving. Remembering what I saw when I walked in, I knew I just had to show them out the door. They were too scared by the flames to try to get out. There was no time to convince them to just rush through it. First I threw the teacher out, and then I started throwing the kids out the door, hoping the teacher or someone else would be there to get them away from the building. Virginia and I were last, and my ass was literally on fire. Once outside, I sat on my butt and breathed in the fresh air. I felt great. This is what I trained for. This is something I practiced with my toys as a child. It was... Virginia interrupted my self-praise. Dad, Chloe is still there. Oh, please, dear Lord, let her be wrong. I looked at the teacher who was examining the rescued children. She looked at me with great fear and screamed. She went to the toilet before the fire broke out. I immediately prayed, Dad, I'm coming. Either help me get through this or prepare a place for me. If I die, I'll be there for dinner. Before I could move forward, my boss grabbed me. Damn it, Butch, I order you not to go back there. You'll just kill yourself. Can you hear me? I sank sharply, as if submitting to him, resigning myself to the facts. Then I turned around and punched the boss. He fell. I put on his fire jacket, helmet, and oxygen supply. I ran towards the door, which was now completely engulfed in flames. I was wearing only regular trousers and shoes. As a result, my left leg and foot were burned upon entering the building. I could tell I howled from the pain and the sickening smell of burning flesh. I soon realized that I was not getting enough oxygen. The plastic tubes leading from the mask to the oxygen tank melted. I took off my mask and it felt like I was breathing fire. I strained my memory to remember the location of the toilet. Somehow I ignored the flames, opened the toilet door, and immediately closed it back. The toilet gave me a short respite. Chloe was lying on the floor, unconscious, but breathing. I took one of the towels from the toilet and threw it into the sink, trying to wet as much as possible. After wrapping Chloe, especially her head, in a towel, I took her under my right arm and tried to direct Walter Payton's tackle breaker to score a touchdown. The flames acted like midfielders in waiting. 
Holding the falling hot debris with my left hand, I shouted, Fuck you, fire. It belongs to me. Somehow, and I really don't know how, I managed to get out before I lost consciousness. I had a dream. My face was a piece of fat sizzling in the pan, and I couldn't get it off. I shuddered and woke up. Doctor, he woke up. The voice was familiar. I opened my eyes. It was my ex-wife, Jennifer. Medical personnel came running. The nurse asked, Mr. Davis, can you hear me? I motioned for the nurse to come closer. I whispered as loud as I could, Get that bitch out of here, or I'll sue you for a million dollars. It wasn't what the nurse expected to hear, but a crying Jennifer was taken out. I gave the order that I did not want to see anyone except my fire brigade. I wanted to see Virginia, but I didn't want her to see me. Not in the same shape as I was then. I was surprisingly happy for two main reasons. I was told that Chloe was alive, and I had morphine shots. Over the course of several months, I went through multiple surgeries and skin grafts. My left leg was amputated and my left arm and left side of my face were badly burned. I could get a job on The Walking Dead and not have to wear makeup. The only visitors were the firefighters, who told me how much better I looked now. Smart guys. I love them all. The city insurance company paid all my medical and rehabilitation bills. I was given awards for my bravery, but the best reward I received was from Virginia and Chloe. They awarded me Dad of the Year. I plan to keep the certificate they created and colored for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. What the hell will happen now? I couldn't be a firefighter anymore. Too much damage due to an amputated left leg and a handicapped left arm. I was given a part-time job as a dispatcher at EOC to help supplement my disability payments. This made me happy. I managed to keep Jennifer and Art away from me. I have rejected all verbal and written attempts to contact me. To hell with them, their thanks, and apologies. I didn't do it for them. However, they managed to indirectly convey some surprising information to me. One of the firefighters who arrived told me, Dude, you won't believe this. The bastard who stole your wife and whose daughter you saved just joined the fire department. You could have told me that the entire media had gone pro-Trump and I would have believed it sooner than what I just heard. I should have asked for more information. Yeah. He says there's no way he can repay you for saving his daughter, but he could repay the department and the community for losing a firefighter. He says he knows he will never be as good a fireman as you, but he will try his best. Don't worry, Butch. We told him a lot of crap because of what he did to you. He won't be able... No. Leave him alone. In fact, I want you to help him. Dude, did you inject yourself with too much morphine? He stole your wife and daughter. I smiled and said, think about it. My wife left me for him partly because I was a firefighter and he wasn't. This is true. I can't think of a better way to get revenge on her. She can't help but be a hypocrite. I like it. I will also take revenge on Art. He must live the rest of his life knowing that the man whose wife he stole from saved his precious daughter. I think that I am the happiest cripple on earth. I smiled so hard that the burned part of my face hurt. I injected more morphine instead of stopping grinning. Now that I was in a better mood, I decided that I was ready to meet people, or rather, let them see me. First I asked to see Art, which I hope really pissed off my ex. I was getting better. Art came in, sobbing like a baby. Butch, I owe you so much. I will do everything in my power for you. Just ask me. You refused to let me help pay your bills. I didn't know what to do. I just had to do something. My guilt for falling in love with your wife and my gratitude for saving my Chloe. Both were on my mind constantly, day and night. That's when the idea of becoming a firefighter came to my mind. If I can't repay you, I can at least give something back to the community for their loss. He seemed completely sincere as he continued to cry. Then he pulled himself together. Please let me bring Chloe. She's dying to thank you. I agreed. Chloe appeared at the door, but without Virginia, she would not have moved. They both ran up to my bed and were happy to see their best dad's certificate proudly displayed. After they looked at me, Chloe said, You look scary. Virginia agreed. I laughed while Art chided them. I said, You are absolutely right, girls. 
You see, I was once a handsome prince, and then one day a wicked old witch named Jennifer kissed me and turned me into an ogre. Virginia said, Daddy, this is silly. We had a wonderful visit. I swear Virginia grew up while I was in the hospital. Then I realized that I no longer wanted to miss anything from raising my daughter. Art came back with the girls a few times, but we also got to know each other better. I'll be damned if I didn't really start to like this guy. It helped that he never asked me if I would agree to talk to Jennifer. He rarely mentioned her at all. During one of his last visits, I brought up a topic that had been on my mind for a long time. Art, I hope we can restore my visiting schedule. If you and Jennifer agree, I'd like to see Virginia more often now that I'm not a firefighter. Well, that would be more than acceptable for several reasons. First of all, I'm a firefighter now, and you know what that means schedule-wise. The other is that Jennifer abandoned me and the girls. She said she was filing for divorce. Butch, I think she fooled us both. She might even have fooled herself. She believed that our work schedule was detrimental to our marriages and time with our girls. Now I came to the conclusion that she was just grumbling because all the attention wasn't on her. When she couldn't convince me not to become a firefighter, she just got up and left. I know I need help with Virginia and Chloe. Your mother and Jennifer's mother are helping out temporarily. Also, in case you haven't figured it out yet, Virginia and Chloe are now an inseparable couple. You can't have one without the other. How could she just leave Virginia? And she must have gotten a little closer to Chloe, too. I think Jennifer became jealous of Chloe. Virginia wanted to spend time with Chloe, not with her mother. Jennifer seemed to be on her own, even when the four of us lived in the same house. Her last comment after telling me she didn't want custody was, Girls seem to prefer their dads anyway. Well, they can have both of you. Damn, Art. You are right. She was even more spoiled than I thought. Art burst into tears again. Art, Virginia and I will do everything in our power to help you and Chloe. Time has passed. Virginia and Chloe are about to graduate from high school and go to college. I moved in with Art and the girls after rehab. The guys from the fire department chipped in and bought me a specially equipped minivan. The greatest contribution was made by Art. He is a truly good person and has become an excellent firefighter, with my help, of course. We gave up parenting and household responsibilities. As you can imagine, given my limitations, it takes me longer to get my part done. Luckily, we found a couple of ladies who can handle the problems our girls' only daughters faced. They also satisfy the sexual needs that Art and I had. I am in the process of moving back into my old rental home. Art and I will probably have new roommates once the girls get to college. I believe we will meet often. Unfortunately, I try to fit everything I can into as little time as possible. The consequences of the fire included burns to the esophagus and lungs as a result of inhalation of fire and smoke. I was given six months or so to live. I didn't tell anyone. I don't want anyone to know until I can't hide it anymore. Jennifer's mom still sees Virginia and Chloe often. She keeps us updated on Jennifer's developments. The last thing she said was that Jennifer had another child, but she divorced his father. It seems he cheated on her. I tried to be sympathetic. Well, maybe not very much. From my point of view, my salvation in the circle allowed me to take revenge on Jennifer and Art for over ten years. I'll have to settle for this. Damn fire managed to ruin my revenge on him. Well... Two out of three isn't bad. Sorry, Dad. We'll talk soon. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. Listening to the next one. Listening to the next one.